Hello guys, I'm back. Uh, this will be uh, the second part of uh, the schematic videos and we're going to start at the front end of the radio. I thought long and hard on this. Uh, this probably can be one of the hardest things to actually teach uh, this way anyway. Uh, that's how come I really kind of pushed a lot on uh, radio theory and uh, electronic theory and tube theory uh, mainly because it's a lot easier to learn it that way than it is to uh, to understand what's going on and to take a section at a time and work through the circuit but we're going to try doing it and we'll see how we get and uh, how many questions I get and how confusing it gets for anybody. Hopefully I can explain it well enough that it's not too confusing. Uh, I don't know how long each section will take. I don't even know how long this is going to take. Uh, like I said, I'm going to kind of go over a couple, three different schematics. Uh, two mainly. The third one just kind of shows some differences because it's a foreign schematic just that you might run into. You never know when you'll be what radios you'll get in the future. You may already have a, a something from overseas. But uh, so we'll kind of go over the differences, uh, things that you might see that seems weird or different to you. So let's, uh, I guess, start at the very beginning at the antenna terminals and, and see what actually is going on. I'm not going to rely a whole lot on. Uh, delving deeply in how things are hooked up well at least not per se as gee this is what it is here and then how it hooks into a radio uh, that's actually a total different type of set of videos and I went over some of those a little bit and stuff uh, you may recognize the schematic it's uh, one that uh, it's a Sears and Roebuck radio that uh, Art is working on and uh, doing a real great job on. The chassis looks great on it. If you haven't seen his videos, uh, you might want to check him out and uh, check out his uh, channel too. Uh, Author Hollingsworth is the his name, and he's been doing. Uh, a real nice job on this. He's just getting started to putting it back together. So anyway, he, he had already worked on the coils and he'd done some decent videos on those and the things, challenges he ran into. And uh, so you might want to check those out. So that's how come I'm not really going to concentrate a huge amount other than explaining them a little bit and what's going on there. Uh, kind of touching back on, you know, oscillators and and the uh, different types of uh, circuits of that nature and how this fits in. So we'll start with the antenna. We have our antenna connections here. There are uh, three connections. One just goes to ground which is uh, hooked to the chassis. Uh, you have your regular antenna and then there's a Basically, it's a uh, distance antenna. It's more or less for shortwave. Feeds down through here and uh, through this L1 coil. And basically, this coil here, uh, it's a trap filter um, to trap out certain frequencies. And being this is actually on the distant, I not absolutely sure without actually delving deeper into the the radio itself but my guess is it's trapping at a higher frequency but it may be uh, the IF frequencies but it could be also a much higher frequency but uh, some of the old radios back in the 30s and early 40s had these traps in there uh, some most of them were set at the IF frequencies uh, mainly because there were 
there were some stations that actually operated on those frequencies uh, such as marine stations uh, radio stations and stuff so they just take uh, a coil and usually a capacitor but in this case they're actually the way it's drawn it, it's telling you that this thing is uh, uh, wound kind of in a flat plane more and kind of like uh, say the the lid of this would be kind of like your coil it may have uh, thickness to it but it's round wound in more of a flat plane and then they mount it if this was the sheet paper was the chassis you mount it to the chassis like that so they're parallel and that allows the coil to be one kind of acting as one plate of a capacitor and the chassis is another so you end up with a uh, basic tank circuit uh, filter circuit that's there so anyway your signal comes in it will go through the antenna coils these three guys are the coils they are switched to the switch for your different bands and uh, feed through the antenna coils the VC here is just your uh, variable condenser your tuning condenser it makes up the primary tank you do have uh, some trimmer caps in various spots but to help trim and, and align it so it's is resonating at the proper frequency for, for where the dial set and that just sets your dial on the antenna system and basically uh, most instructions and most time what you're doing is you set it somewhere uh, not at the highest frequency somewhere usually uh, like on the AM band around like 1400 or somewhere in that range and then you adjust uh, your antenna trimmer to get the highest uh, output so you peek it out this feeds through now this uh, dotted line here with this line coming across here this dotted line is it, it's a coax okay or a shielded cable that's feeding up to the grid of our mixer converter tube mixer oscillator well no actually this is the RF sorry to the RF tube this is our mixer converter and oscillator tube So we feed into there. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this circuit, just a little bit. We have a .002 cap here. We have a .01 here, a .01 here, and of course these are trimmers. You got a .05 here, and a resistor, 2.2 meg resistor. Now part of this like this down here uh, seems to be more of a time constant so my guess is, is this is actually switching in since we're switching in uh, different coils and at different points and adding in and adding out and we're one thing that we're wanting to do is on this RF we want to have it hooked in the AVC the, the, I drew the primary part of it here in this kind of a orange color or whatever it is yellow orange come down here and come across and over to here and there's other parts here of it but that's your ABC circuit but being that we have several bands and they're switching in uh, several different coils into there I, I think they added they added this here for an extra filter for your time constant so the 0.05 and the 2.2 meg will give a particular time constant when some of these coils down here are fully uh, switched in and for your higher frequencies um, you know the higher bands in shortwave since there's so many coils instead of just relying strictly on some of the other filtering which is only way back here 0.05 in the 2.2 here so they added this in right down here to make up for you know because this is quite a long ways away now 
the point oh one and the point zero zero two these are decoupling caps all right <coughs> and what that really means is they're feeding off any unwanted interference or any unwanted oscillations or, or bleeding them off out, out of the circuit. Uh, these were probably, might have not even been in the initial design, or they might have been in there, but they might have been um, different other sizes. These kind of tend to be in there because when they initially put the radio together um, on test when they was testing their design they found that they were getting some you know, spurious uh, interference some, some problems there that was showing up and they needed to bleed that off and they probably used a lot of trial and error to get get the exact sizes they needed but that's all they are. They're just decoupling. They're just pulling off anything that shouldn't be there. They're sized out so that they will not affect the actual frequencies you want. They will find these kind of high resistance. But other frequencies, other noises, other s stuff that's in there will find it a fairly easy path uh, to get across and get out of there. The .01 that's in series here, this comes back and actually, uh, well, I think when it's switched properly, it switches into ground. So I think this actually uh, will be fed to ground and it's probably just another decoupling. Then beyond that, you just got some various uh, resistors. We've got a uh, right here, kind of a, a voltage divider here that... Uh, feeds into the cathode. Th this basically is nothing more than uh, a biasing resistor section with a, a divider in here. So, and then the 0.25 is its bypass cap. They kind of drew it long ways away. Generally you'll see these right beside your resistor, your cathode resistor, but that's, all that's doing is biasing the grid control grid so there'll be a certain amount of voltage drop across these resistors which will set the uh, cathode more positive than the grid or think of it the other way the grid will be negative respect to the cathode and in all voltages everything how the tube operates is always respect to the cathode again bypass here this also comes along and feeds the uh, which I'm getting off line here up just a little bit this also is feeding the cathode here on the mixer oscillator tube as well as the cathode on the IF so we're we've used one line one set of resistors and one bypass to actually bias these three tubes now the biasing here when I get to this circuit is actually for this grid here it is for the signal grid going in. It has nothing to do with oscillator grids or anything else. So and then we, uh, of course this is all, your screen grid is usually tied to your cathode so it stays at the poten same potential as cathode. Uh, you have of course your control grid being fed here from your signal and or not screen grid but suppressor grid and then you have your screen here coming up through here that will be on this purple or blue line it's supplied with a reduced voltage uh, they're showing 245 on the plate 105 on it so it it's goes through some resistors to uh, bleed off some of that and bring it down from 245 to 105 it comes back and feeds back to the B plus. The kind of a pink color is the B plus line. It feeds in. Now, moving on out of the circuit, again, basically a lot of the switching that's done here, there, um, two things are happening or mostly this is switching the antenna coil 
they pretty much got a fixed what they call RF coil in here there's not much added extra coils to it um, it does kind of have a little bit of feed from the oscillator circuit but that's only on the secondary here so it's actually just a feed into the oscillator as opposed to get it up to into some of the other circuit so we have this coil which is part of L3 is basically now it's going to get a little help and boost from the other parts of L3 which is still actually partially working for our L2 which is in conjunction with it through the switches for antenna as well as kind of keeping this thing tuned so that uh, the plate is kind of tuned the output tuned to the frequency that you tune the radio to its tank circuit is made up right here here's the uh, second section of the tuning condenser and it switches in through the switch and works between the junction of these coils at the same time these guys are working so they've kind of combined some coils here a little bit and kind of getting them to do double duty as far as uh, now it's got a point zero zero two decoupling cap uh, coming off of it and then we have a trimmer uh, we you know otherwise there's just some resistors in here um, this is just to bleed off some voltage here take it to you know bring it down to ground a little bit and then it comes back yeah it'll come back here and its main dropper is this 15k we have a 0.1 capacitor what this is for it's another decoupling but its purpose more is this plate has got signal on it so you've got your radio signal that you've tuned in coming through here and it's going to be on this B plus you don't want it going back into the rest of the radio so you draw it off right here and take it to ground <coughs> see where we're at we're about 17 minutes I'm just trying to think of anything else I want to say on this area here um, and I really can't think of anything that is of interest uh, other than down here we've got several trimmers that will be switched in and out uh, basically they're going to adjust various coils depending on where the switch is at and what coils they hook to when the switch is in that position and they're just there to uh, do your fine tuning, your alignment, you get everything uh, working the way it should be. Uh, a lot of these will probably be, some may be either across the coil or some may be in series with a coil. I'll get into that more when we get in the oscillator coils, but when you got uh, caps are in they end up being switched in series with a particular coil uh, they're there more to kind of reduce the capacitance the inner winding capacitance of the windings themselves of the coil a coil does have a certain amount of capacitance due to the windings you know you got two you know basically you've got uh, two plates two wires side by side insulated from each other so even though they're actually connected all the way through, they do develop a certain amount of capacitance from one end of the coil to another end. So sometimes, you know, it, it may cause you some problems, and sometimes you have to put in trimmers to adjust, and sometimes even fix capacitors to reduce that capacitance, because be you'll be putting in a series capacitance. When you put capacitors together in series, you reduce the capacitance. When they're in parallel, your capacitance adds. I think I'm going to stop there with RF. We'll move on to the mixer oscillator circuit in the next video and uh, go from there. 
and continue with this and we might come back to this if there's any questions or anything that's uh, you know I didn't explain very well or you you know you want a little more information on or something like that so uh, until the next video thanks for watching I got a few new subscribers I want to thank you guys for being on board um, I cover a lot of different things and I want to thank you y'all for your comments and stuff I've been working on trying to get some of them answered I'll be working on some more tonight and tomorrow to get uh, answered some more uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make another video after this one and it'll be uh, we'll get another part of math in there and in that where since that's actually kind of short video um, we're gonna kind of jump into AC and uh, DC circuits as well because yeah, uh, we're getting to that point that now the math has to start going and compass with theory kind of hand in hand so anyway uh, until the next video thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one